Hi there, welcome to the Microsoft Expert Community Sessions. This is where we bring the best Microsoft experts to help educate you to get the most out of Microsoft technologies. Topics will range from M365, governance, Power Platforms, Copilot, and plenty of other Microsoft goodness. So please make sure to follow us for any new content and also feel free to contact us if there's any requests of new topics you'd like to see. So my name's Paul Sutton. I'm part of the Ticket team. Also joining me is Joelle Fiera, a Microsoft MVP and book author who has been working with Microsoft technologies for over a decade. For those who don't know, Ticket is a leading Microsoft aligned IT service management platform built for the Microsoft Cloud. Today's session, we're focusing on Microsoft lists and I'm very excited as Joelle has extensive experience in the subject and I personally always look for ways to be more organized and track work projects. So with that said, I will pass you over to Mr. Fiera. Joelle. All right, thank you so much, Paul. And um, welcome everyone to this session where I will be talking about Microsoft Lists and how you can use it to be more productive uh, inside of Microsoft 365 and how you can bring it to the place where you do most of your work, uh, what is Microsoft Teams. So um, before we dive into what Microsoft Lists is and how it looks like, let me uh, first talk about our uh, agenda. So I will briefly explain what Microsoft Lists is, where it comes from and where it is now, uh, the benefits of using Microsoft Lists with a few examples so you can easily relate with things that you typically do on your day-to-day -day, um, and how you can then see um, how those typical tasks can be transformed and shared inside of a Microsoft ecosystem using a list, how to use Microsoft Lists and how to access to them. And um, we will end this with um, showing you how to bring Microsoft lists to the context of your teams so you and other uh, members inside of the organization can easily collaborate on uh, those lists. So my name uh, is João Ferreira. I'm from Portugal. I'm a Microsoft MVP in the Microsoft 365 development category and I've been working uh, with Microsoft lists um, ever since I started working with um, with Microsoft. Um, even though Microsoft Lists is a product with three years um, only, but um, it is an evolution, an actual evolution of what we had since uh, 03, SharePoint 03, that it was um, SharePoint Lists. So Microsoft Lists um, can be easily identified this by this colorful icon inside of your Microsoft 365 uh, suite of products. It's included in all the licensing models, so which means that if you have uh, Microsoft 365 E3, uh, E5, or uh, even Office 365 E3 or E5, then you will have access to uh, Microsoft lists by default. And uh, Microsoft recently made it available also to personal accounts, which means that what you will see here today and what you will learn here today, then you can use also on your personal life because it's also uh, now included uh, as part of your live accounts with your personal uh, OneDrive. So as I told you, uh, Microsoft Lists uh, was a new app that Microsoft released about three years ago um, to wrap together the list that existed in SharePoint. It's still powered by SharePoint. Everything works inside of SharePoint, but now it has its own application and with it, it came support for uh, personal lists inside of the OneDrive. It's an app that um, groups all the list you have inside of your tenant. Um, in the old days of SharePoint only, you used to have lists spread across multiple sites, but there was no common interface to group all those lists in a single location and it was hard to share them, it was hard to manage them, and the interface of lists uh, was kind of ugly uh, and not user-friendly at all. So Microsoft fixed all of that with this new uh, version of Microsoft Lists. 
They can be um, seen as uh, databases, simple databases. And the easiest way to uh, imagine a list is to imagine uh, uh, an Excel spreadsheet. So whenever you want to um, start storing some data, probably the first thing you do is open Excel and create a new spreadsheet. Uh, that's exactly what you can do also with Microsoft List. So every time you need to uh, create uh, a list to store something, let's let's imagine uh, a to-do list that it's something that everyone has for sure. Um, if you need to create a new to-do list uh, for your tasks, uh, for your uh, projects, um, instead of doing it uh, in, a, in a spreadsheet or using something more advanced like project, you can use something more simple um, like Microsoft Lists that actually, even though it's simple, gives you a lot of flexibility uh, and customization options and allows you to change the data model as you progress. So if you create um, if you create the uh, to-do list and later on you realize that you need new columns to assign the to-do items uh, to certain uh, members of your team, or you need new columns to add categories or add description about the to-do uh, list, you can easily do that. Uh, and uh, by changing the data model, you will not be touching items that were previously added um, to the list. So you will have the opportunity to go there and, and add more data to the model to fill those columns. but you will not be confined to the typical uh, and rigid structures of uh, databases. And lastly, uh, Microsoft Leads can be fully customized. Uh, Microsoft has a great um, interface for you to manage them, but then uh, they also built an extensibility way for you to customize and adjust the list to your needs. Uh, and when I say customize and adjust the list to your needs, I'm talking about changing the way data looks like. So it, it doesn't need to look like a like a, an Excel spreadsheet. You can really transform uh, everything completely uh, and you can see data in different ways that you never uh, imagined before in a in a spreadsheet format and um, the good thing about this uh, list is also the possibility to integrate with other Microsoft 365 uh, applications for example power automate uh, where you can easily set up approval workflows for items in your lists uh, so imagine that you need to set up a list for travel requests and the manager needs to approve or reject each travel request manually, then Microsoft has a built-in solution out of the box inside of Microsoft Lists for you um, to do that. So hope this give you, gives you an idea of what Microsoft Lists is if you are not familiar with it yet. If you are still a bit confused about it, no worries. We will jump right into Microsoft Lists and I will show you with real examples. Uh, and I'm sure you will um, you will understand easily how it works and what is the main uh, goal of lists. So three key benefits that I always like to highlight about using Microsoft Lists. The collaboration and sharing of the information, it's super easy to do. So there's no need for you to uh, either share the file, knowing uh, if the file is in a SharePoint site or you're in your OneDrive. Uh, sharing the Microsoft list is as simple as um, clicking on the chair and adding the mail of the user. So no need to attach uh, things to custom emails and keeping multiple versions of uh, different uh, files. This is always updated and it's always in the last version and everyone has a single link uh, to access uh, to it. Still, you can restrict who access to each individual list by using the permissions from SharePoint. Customiz customizable views, it's one of my favorites uh, and you can build pretty much whatever you want with views uh, and uh, better than trying to explain uh, in words what customizing a view is, I will show you uh, what it is uh, in the demo. And then the last one, it's the automated workflows. Uh, if you need to build more complex business processes inside of your organization, and if you need to store the data somewhere, uh, lists, it's 
an awesome location to do that because it integrates with Power Automate. And with that, you can build your um, approval workflows and your automated workflows to approve, reject um, items that you need to uh, work with inside of the organization. So examples um, of Microsoft list. Uh, To-do list, uh, it's my number one uh, list. Instead of using paper, every time I need to do uh, a to-do list, now I use Microsoft uh, lists. I do it for things inside of my teams uh, or uh, for personal projects. Um, I use it quite a lot. Project management. Uh, Microsoft has other solutions to manage projects, but if you are working with something simple, something that you need to do internally that does not require um, project or planner, Microsoft um, Microsoft is, is also a good a good uh, example um, of project management. And uh, issue tracking, issue tracking in inventory management are also two other good examples and Microsoft actually has pre-built templates uh, for you to build um, this kind of things inside of the organization. So um, on this demo, uh, I will show you how you access to uh, Microsoft lists. I will show you how you create a list. Uh, I will show you where do you store a list. And this is one of the most important things. Uh, keep in mind that um, the place where you store the list will impact uh, who has access to the list and might have an impact later on uh, when you decide to share the list with other members inside of the organization. Uh, I will show you how to share uh, a list and um, I, I will show you also how you can use the templates and start over again uh, every time you need to start a new project or build a new to-do um, a new to-do list. So with this um, slide, we have are ready to go and jump into the demo. So let me just minimize this and bring up here um, Microsoft Lists uh, as an application. So Microsoft Lists is a Microsoft 365 application. As I told you, it's, um, it's available inside of the Microsoft uh, suite. And once you open it in the browser, if you are using Microsoft uh, Edge or Google Chrome, it might, you, it might ask you to uh, install it as an app. So it's available as a progressive web app, which means that you are actually able to install this website as an application. And that's exactly what I have here. So uh, every time I need to access my list, I don't need to go to the browser and open the list and look for the list. I've installed it um, as an application and it acts like uh, any other uh, Microsoft application. It acts like Microsoft Word or Microsoft PowerPoint. So it's 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 uh, a desktop application, um, even though it's using the version that it's in the browser. So it's uh, easily recognized by this purple, co purple uh, color. And this is the landing page where you will um, land every time you open the list. At the top, you have your favorites. And then you have your recent lists uh, from um, multiple locations and multiple sites. So as you can see, you, there's the name of the list, the name of the site where the list is stored, and then the uh, date the, the list was last um, modified. And in this selector here, there is um, a dropdown that allows you to select between recent lists and my lists. And my lists, as you can see here, they do not show any uh, information about the site. This means that these lists, instead of being stored um, in the SharePoint site, they are stored on the user personal uh, site inside of uh, Microsoft 365. We can say that they are stored inside of the OneDrive. Um, so you have this possibility of creating a list that it's in the SharePoint site, in a team site that you share with your team members inside of Microsoft Teams. Or if you want to build something more personal just for you to keep track of your own things inside of the organization, then you have this possibility. Um, let's see how we can create then um, the lists. There's this button right at the top. 
you click on the new list uh, button and the first thing that you see is um, the set of tiles with the options you can start uh, creating a list uh, using the blank list and in this case you will have to manually create all the columns uh, to store the data uh, if you already have a list uh, you can use it um, to create a new list based on what you already did. So if you if you spend time already customizing the list, creating the columns, applying views, applying formattings, uh, this option allows you to get all of that and start with an empty list. And these two options are actually my favorites. If you've been building something in Excel, uh, then it's time to bring it to um, to bring it to Microsoft lists. Obviously, this will only work for simple uh, Excel files. Uh, if you have complex things uh, with a lot of formulas and things, well, list is not the 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 place to bring all that information. But if you have a spreadsheet with just a few tables or a single table, then uh, you can easily import that into a Microsoft list. Lists will get the name of the columns in Excel and create the columns with the data, the correct data type that you have in Excel and will bring all the data uh, to Microsoft lists. Same thing happens with the CSV file. So if you have um, data in a CSV format, um, you will be able to bring it uh, to the list and um, Microsoft creates and imports everything based on that. Then at the bottom, what we have is uh, the list of templates, uh, and these are all the ones that you have available from Microsoft. There are some of them here that probably don't make a lot of sense in um, a business scenario like this recipe tracker, but um, a good thing about it is that Microsoft actually allows um, the, organ the administrator to disable some of this uh, out of the box and out of this uh, template. So uh, as I told you, issue tracker is one of the things that is built in by default, employee onboarding, event itinerary. And if you look here, we have two um, templates with the same image. We have the travel request and we have the travel request with approval. Um, and this means that when you select this template, Microsoft built uh, by default the approval workflow that you that, that you can configure then to approve uh, travel requests. So this is everything that this template includes. So it, it has a trip title, the reason to travel, the requester, the destination. So all this information, and you can complement this with more extra columns if you if you have the need to do that. And then um, once you click to use the template, uh, it asks you to select the um, color that will identify the list and the icons. Uh, you are limited to only to, to only these options. Um, personally, I would like to have more to, to, to customize the list with my own icons uh, to make it easier to identify which list is what. But well, this is what we have uh, and it's not possible to change. What's important here is the, the save to. Uh, this is what you should pay attention. By default, it's set to my list. And if you don't pay attention to this, um, especially for something like travel requests with approvals, uh, you will end up creating the list uh, in your personal site. This means that if you leave the organization, uh, all the work that you did uh, will be um, wasted because once the your account gets archived or gets gets deleted, this content goes with it. Uh, so the thing that I that I um, suggested to do, if you are creating a list to store information that others will access to, is to store it in a SharePoint site. This could be uh, a communication site. This could be a team site. Um, this could be a team. Uh, but that, that's where I recommend you to uh, store and to create the list. So I will create this in this intranet uh, site just to show you how simple it is. Uh, travel request with approvals, hit the create button. And in just a few seconds, here is my list. Now, um, to create new items into the list, there's this new button. The form, it's right here with all the um, columns that the list has for you to add um, information. 
but I told you that you can customize this if you need to add more columns to the list and if you need to add more of your business logic to um, to Microsoft list. And to do that, you just need to click in this add column. And when you do uh, the add column, you need to select um, what are the data type that you will be using. So by default, it sets it to text. text. It's a text field that it's limited to 255 characters of text, uh, but there's more. Uh, you have choice, you have date and time, multiple lines of text that actually supports uh, rich text, uh, persons that allow you to get users from your um, from your ID, from your organization and, and tag them in here. Uh, yes or no, hyperlinks, location, images. So there's uh, a lot of um, different types of data that you can use to get the, um, the information in here. So, just to show you how things look like, uh, let's get back um, to the to-do list, to the sample to-do list that I just showed you, to, that I just mentioned uh, when I was doing the introduction about Microsoft List. So typically to-do lists uh, have a title, uh, they can have a description or not, and you then cross um, the title when, when the task is done. That's how it works on paper. Uh, and there's no reason for it to work in a different way um, in here. So what you see, it's the title of um, the task, the description that it's optional. There's a field for category. Obviously, I added the field for category. Uh, due date, um, I can mark this as important or not, and I can easily complete a task by clicking um, this item in here and to create a new one. And this is uh, what I will do right now. Um, I will not uh, add a description. Uh, let's make this category blue. Um, due date, uh, let's make it due date. Super important. This, it's not completed, so I'll leave it like this. So this is uh, how the to-do list looks like. But if you compare this to what you are used to, uh, in the paper in, in what you have um, in Microsoft to do, for example, it has nothing to do with uh, a to-do list. This is this looks more like um, a spreadsheet with this tabular view. Uh, and here is where the different views that Microsoft has um, allow you to further customize the data. So I can see what's spending, what's not. I can even filter and go, go here and filter by the uh, completed ones or the ones that are still waiting for me to complete them. Um, all of that, it's in here but visually this looks like uh, a table to me and it's not super intuitive and it's not super easy to use uh, when you first look and, uh, and when you first see it. So this will require users to um, learn how to use lists and that's not what we want with Microsoft Lists. We want it to be intuitive and we want to make it uh, easy for them to, to use. So what I will show you now is um, how you can change the layout of Microsoft lists using what Microsoft provides out of the box. So I created this list manually. It only had a title. I added all these columns using the add column. And now I will create a new view. And the view, it's a different representation of the data. So Microsoft has four different um, types by default. They have list, they have calendar, gallery, and board. Uh, the calendar uh, displays the information in uh, a month, week, or uh, work week um, format. So it's actually a calendar, super similar to what you have in Outlook. Uh, and the only thing that you need to have for you to put the item into the calendar, it's a date. Uh, and in in any list that you have, you always have two um, date fields, one for when the field was created and another one for, for when it was last modified. And in this particular one, I have also the due date. So let's uh, make this 
calendar view uh, visible um, to all the users that want to visually see what they have to do, what is the due date for each one of the tasks that they need to uh, accomplish. So let's hit the create button. There was no need for me to uh, hide the, um, to not make it public, it could be uh, public. I've selected um, the uh, week view. Let me select the monthly because it's easier to see and easy to access um, the data. So it's save button. And as you can see, this is still my to-do list. I haven't changed anything on the data. I just changed the presentation of the information. I have my calendar. I have my, um, my uh, events, uh, my tasks in the due date for each one of the tasks and they are positioned exactly when they need to be done. So if I want to, for example, make this as a completed one, I can double click in here, change the status to yes, and now it's done. We can refine this further and we can customize um, the view with conditions to show just the ones that are done or the ones um, that are not done or even paint them um, with different colors. If I go, for example, here to format this current view and if I want to um, print them differently based on the status, uh, let me go and edit this rule select the um, actually status is not what is not a good example in here because uh, it's a, a yes no column and it only ha it only supports uh, text and um, and data and choice uh, columns in here but it's possible to do um, the customization of this based on um, on the properties that you have in the list and we will see how that's beneficial uh, in, in another in another example. So this is this is um, one of the views that you have available for all the lists. The only thing that you need to have it's a data uh, column. Um, now let's talk about the gallery and gallery is not um, is not one that will have uh, a visual representation in here. So I will go and show you that in this one. Um, in, in here, uh, where is my list? It's here. Um, so let me quickly go back here to uh, another list where I have uh, images. For example, this player's one. Uh, and let me create a new view here. And as you can see, there's an image column uh, where an image was uploaded to the list. So you can easily add images and have them visible here. And uh, what I will do is create the gallery view. And the gallery uh, will highlight um, an image the first image that it finds in the list, it will be the highlight of your uh, list item. So if you have an image, uh, for example, for um, an inventory or a catalog, this is the best view to use because you will have the visual representation of the item right at the top. And then you can customize what do you see here um, in the in the card. So if you go to the format view and edit the card, you can decide what are the uh, columns that you also want to see in each one of the styles. So it's a really good view um, for scenarios where you have uh, the actual um, images inside of the list. All right, going back uh, to the to do list, there's a fourth. Um, there's a fourth type of view that it's called board. And uh, the board uh, allows you to create um, a cabin board for the, uh, the list. So let's select category instead of status. So let's make this view public, board. And as you can see, it creates the tiles and it created the um, the col one column for each one of the, the categories that, that I have. And the good thing about this is that by drag and dropping uh, the items around, uh, it actually changes 
the values in the list. So you have this visual representation. This is super good for uh, project management where you can simply drag and drop and see things changing and see the progress of your tasks. And if it doesn't have a value assigned, then you can move it to the unassigned. Um, so for example, if I want to see what are the um, what are the tasks that are completed? Um, I just need to um, select the the uh, that column. So these two are not completed. These two, yes, they are completed. So let's complete another one. Um, and now let's move the red back. So this is the fourth um, view that exists. Um, but in reality, that is a, there, there is a fifth view that Microsoft has that is not available in here in when you're creating the create uh, new view, and that's the playlist uh, view. So we are living in a world where um, we do lots and lots of meetings where we generate hundreds of files uh, of video content uh, with presentations, with meetings, uh, and we need a place to uh, host and to access that information um, from a single location uh, as it's it is typically spread across uh, multiple locations. So when you create a new list and uh, you go to the list of templates, there is this playlist uh, type of list. And if you look just to this, this will not tell you what the, this list is. This will show you the tabular view. This, this seems to me, um, more than a bug from the Microsoft side, uh, but what this is, is it, it has nothing to do with what exists in here. So let me go here and let me go to this, open the video playlist. I already have one here with content. Um, it's not this one. Uh, where is it? Um, game stats, game videos, it's this one. So this is the playlist. And um, when you click in the add a new item, instead of having a form to fill with data, uh, it will ask you where the video is stored. And it will create uh, a link to the video and bring all the metadata from the video uh, here. And uh, your users will be able to access um, the videos directly from this list. So you can have one for your daily meetings, you can have one for your sprint reviews, you can have one for your product releases. Uh, if you have all those videos stored inside of the organization or other types uh, of videos, you can do it for the all ends, you can do it for town halls. Um, by combining all that and grouping all that inside of one of these lists, when someone joins the organization or, or when someone needs to access that information, uh, they can easily find that in the list. Search will help to find that because uh, information it's, it's, it's uh, indexed by the Microsoft 365 search. And we have the, um, the playlist layout and the video player um, that it's powered by Microsoft string. So this is the fifth and the even um, gem that Microsoft list has that it's not being widely advertised um, by Microsoft. <clears throat> As I told you, uh, one of the advantages of using Microsoft lists is um, actually using the custom formatting uh, for Microsoft lists. And give me just a second to bring, go back here. And by custom formatting, I mean completely changing the way this information looks like. And I told you that you can configure this um, in different ways. So I can paint, uh, for example, with conditional formatting, I can paint, uh, for example, uh, the columns that were, um, completed, I can make them um, green, the tasks that were completed. And let's say, um, well, I don't want to, I want to add a new rule and the ones that are um, not completed instead of green, I want them to be red. So you can easily um, see what's pending and what's not based on this. 
this is great. This allows you already to format uh, the data partially, but um, it, it allows a lot more than that. And if I click here in the advanced mode, what uh, you see here, it's what Microsoft uses to format Microsoft lists. And um, what you see uh, in here is a JSON file that combines HTML with CSS and allows you to use conditional uh, formulas to uh, do different things within um, within Microsoft Lists. It's not super intuitive and not super easy to uh, get started with, but um, Microsoft uh, supports the PNP uh, initiative that it's a group of MVPs and other community members that build content for several um, Microsoft 365 applications. And Microsoft List is no exception. So if we go to the browser, and let me bring up here the browser, and if we go to pnp.github.io, then um, under samples and solutions, you will find all the uh, samples available for uh, each one of the things that this uh, community uh, does. But what I really want to show you is this sample here. Um, this is a sample that I did uh, for, for this community a uh, while ago. And what you see here, it's Microsoft to do on the left and Microsoft list on the right. And the list that I have uh, in my Microsoft list, it's actually the same list. So to format this, um, and to get started with formatting, the only thing that you need to do is to come up here to this uh, repository. Uh, there's a lot of uh, examples, not all of them so complex as the one that I'm about to show you, but uh, you can start by formatting simple things like the images or like the uh, links in the list and then learn and evolve and create more complex things. So what I will do is open this to do JSON uh, file. I will copy this. Go back to Microsoft lists, and now, if you notice, I'm in the browser, not in the um, not in the Microsoft lists application, and I will format this current view. And I'll go to the advanced mode, and we'll paste what I just copied from the internet. And now this um, looks a lot more like um, a Microsoft. Uh, lists, but we can still go further. Let me go back and remove this uh, formatting and let me hit save. Let's say that I want to clearly see what uh, is done and what not. Uh, Microsoft list allows me to um, group information by um, different types um, of data. So I, I, I'm grouping them now by status, but I can group it by any other uh, column type. And now if I go back to the format current view, clicking the advanced mode and paste again this, when I hit the preview, now I have this that allows me to easily close and expand uh, the items. And when the user comes to this to-do list, it now looks like a to-do list and he knows exactly what he needs to do in here. And for example, if I uncheck this one, uh, it, it's, it's still using the conditional formatting. It's still putting something in red that's overdue that it's not done yet. So he knows that it's spending, but it's the, the to-do list and it has that check um, behavior that we all know from paper and we know from other Microsoft applications. But this one, it's inside uh, of Microsoft Teams. So now if I want um, if I want to share this list uh, with someone else, um, I can click, copy, and share it with any other member that exists in this uh, team. This was created in a team. I can, if I'm the owner of this SharePoint site, I can invite others to access this site. But the good thing that I like about, it, about this is that um, if you are in the Microsoft ecosystem, uh, we spend most of our day 
working uh, and communicating and collaborating inside of Microsoft Teams. So let me bring up here um, Microsoft Teams. What I really like about it is the integration it has uh, for Microsoft Teams. So when you are in a team and you want to have um, a list so other members of the team can work with you on that, you have this um, mm -hmm. list application that allows you to either create new lists inside um, new lists inside of the team of the SharePoint site or add existing lists that you have already in the team. So this to-do list that we just formatted, it's uh, in this team, so I'm selecting it. And now um, I have my to-do list, my same to-do list uh, inside of the team. And if you have someone that loves and works all day long inside of Microsoft um, Teams, they are able to access uh, the list from Teams. If you have someone that it's a Microsoft Lists fan like I am, they can um, access the list. And let me just refresh this so you can see that the, the same list, it's available uh, in the same location. Uh, and if you have SharePoint fans that like to work uh, in, in SharePoint, then here's the SharePoint version. Uh, and this way, everyone working in different application and in different contexts they have and they access to the same uh, source of truth and the same um, source of data. So uh, if I check something in here, um, when next time I come up here, uh, it's checked already. So, um, and same thing happens in here. Um, so next time, I come up here, it's already um, checked. There's quite a lot more that you can do uh, with Microsoft lists. Uh, you can put pretty much everything that um, you do inside of, um, of Microsoft lists. Um, but one last thing that I would like to share with you that it's more targeted to administrators, but will help a lot with the adoption of Microsoft lists is the possibility to create um, custom templates. I told you that Microsoft has this uh, list of templates uh, that the administrator can um, remove. What I didn't told you is that they can also add more templates uh, to the uh, list. So, if I want to create another to-do list with that exact uh, formatting in another site or for my personal use, since it was created and formatted for this organization, the administrator is able to save it and um, make, it, make it available in here. So I hit the create button. Um, the formatting will never be visible in here. You will always see the tabular view. Same thing happens with the playlist. So I will hit the use template. Um, I will save it. Well, same thing in the internet. Uh, this is a to-do list. Uh, let's make it red. Hit create button. And now um, demo, demo. Category blue, due date. Well, it's not mandatory, but let's fill it. Um, super important. Hit save, and here is my new list. So um, instead of recreating, creating the columns, going to GitHub, getting the code, or building the code manually once once again, the administrator can have this added to the um, Microsoft 365 so everyone can take advantage and can adopt um, Microsoft lists as their um, storage for different types of data. And with this, uh, we reach the end of this um, demo and the end of this presentation. So Paul, um, back to you. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Joel. That was very interesting and great content. Uh, I believe actually in one of your slides, there was a Washington Huskies basketball team photo, which um, was actually in Seattle, which is where I live. So I don't know if you did that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, 
it's it's one of my favorite um, college basketball teams, and the reason is but the Huskies. The the Huskies, yeah. They, oh. they, the the co- the coach is Genu Oriyama. Yeah. It's one of the best basketball coaches. So um, well, I never knew. So I it. well, next time you come to Seattle to Microsoft, we have to go to a game. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but no, anyway, that was uh, that was great content, and I'm sure our community found lots of value too. And you know, as I mentioned at the beginning, Ticket runs um, a series of M365 sessions just like this. So please feel free to check out um, Ticket.ai. Uh, we have a ton of resources there. Um, if you have any questions about this session or suggestions on future topics, then please feel free to to um, email us at team at ticket.ai. Um, you can follow us on social channels. And if you'd like to stay in contact with Yahal, um, then feel free to follow him on X and LinkedIn. There's an email address. And uh, just one question, um, in terms of the, the content today and for people who are looking to learn more and other resources, where would you recommend for people to um, go? So um, Microsoft has a very comprehensive documentation that will explain everything from the very the very basics all the way to the administrative tasks uh, that I mentioned in the end. So they cover everything. And um, also, once you start building your list and you start exploring the customization uh, part, going and talking with the PNP community members will definitely help you to get things done faster. And uh, don't be afraid to go there and just grab the samples that are there and apply them to your list. You will not be breaking any of the, your data. The worst thing that can happen is that your data disappears from the screen, mm-hmm. but if you delete the JSON or if you fix it, it's back. Uh, you, when you format the list, uh, you are not touching the actual data. You are touching the uh, presentation uh, layer. So you don't need to be afraid of ruin uh, what you have stored in, in the list. Awesome. OK. Uh, well, that's that's great. And um, in the spirit of time, uh, just want to thank you again and um, look forward to working with you. And um, yeah, thank you so much. Any any final words before we conclude? Thank you so much for having me um, here. It was a lot of fun. Um, and well, um, if you want me to, if you want to have me back uh, to explore more advanced topics, um, just call me again, and and I'm more than happy to do a follow up <laughs> session. Definitely, and we can talk basketball next time too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you again. All right. Thank Take you so care. much. Thanks. Bye bye.